My name is Patrick from Snaily in Canada, and uh, our company is uh, mandated to make first and last mile boxes smart, and we do that with our content second notify technology. Basically, what we have is a patent pending technology that identifies when there's something in or not in any type of compartment. It applies to uh, postal industry by putting it into street letter boxes or courier drop off boxes. Uh, we can put it into PO boxes on the last mile parcel lockers, as well as community mailboxes and any other type of compartment that needs to know when there's something in it. So how does that benefit postal operators is that in a first mile application, we can put it in the street letter boxes or the courier uh, pickup boxes and know when those boxes need to be cleared. That data can run into a route planning application to minimize that day's operational cost and only check the boxes that need to be checked uh, and be cleared for that day. But more interestingly is that we now start to get some data, and that data can now be used for network optimization. So we can tell which boxes are underutilized, which neighborhoods are over-serviced or under-serviced, and we can now do a global minimization on our network for first mile so that we can minimize our operational cost overall. And on a last mile application, uh, it's more of a consumer model, so we partner with the uh, postal operator and give them a new revenue stream and they give the consumer new convenience about using their PO box or the community mailbox, so they're only gonna check their boxes when there's actually something in it to be cleared out. So that raises three interesting notions, is that if we make the PO box or the community box more uh, practical and more convenient to the consumer, can we increase, for example, PO box utilization rates? So all postal operators around the world have all kinds of existing infrastructure and PO boxes, and they're not running most of the time at 100% rental rates. So if we make them more attractive cons to consumers by making the box more convenient, can we increase that PO box utilization rate? The other notion that can come from this is that instead of a direct mail piece sitting in a box and waiting for the consumer to show up, can we prompt the consumer to go and make that conversion rate or that direct mail response rate increase, which then increases the revenue of that ability to sell that service and then coupling those two together, if the consumer is going more often to their PO box and if the box utilization rate is higher, then what we get is more traffic at the postal office. So then our point of sale opportunity increases as well. So now we have more ability to make revenue out of a postal office. So yesterday we talked a lot about data. There are millions of passive boxes on both first and last mile around the world. The only data that's available is anecdotal. We don't know what the consumer utilization rate looks like. We don't know if we can influence behavior of each of these boxes. We don't know which uh, first mile boxes can be removed from our network. We have no insights to that data at all. So if you install some technology, some internet of things technology like, like our device, then not only do we have a usefulness, but we also have data that's now coming in to make proper business decisions with this data. So in the internet of things, there are two main things that we need in, uh, in a compartment. So we need our batteries and we need our modem. Having those inside uh, our compartment opens up a whole new set of other services we can offer with the same device. So in Canada, we have a security issue with our community boxes, for example. They're, they're not monitored. They sit alone at night. They get broken into for identity theft. Uh, people taking out uh, prepaid gift cards and what have you. If there's technology in the box, like it, such as our device, we can start looking at, can we secure these boxes and provide that as a deterrent? So can we monitor unauthorized entry? Well, the answer is yes, because our device uses a modem and batteries. And coupling a new technology, which is batteries no big deal, and you can take it further into direct mail applications where now you can offer out premium RFID services to direct mailers that want to pay for that. And that kind of stuff sort of evolves as we put Internet of Things technology in what are currently passive boxes. We can take our technology and move it into the uh, parcel locker world. So the automated parcel locker world, uh, they use, for the most part, door open, door close technology, and that action deems the locker empty. Now, from a security standpoint, they're not necessarily empty. We're just thinking, assuming they're empty because the door's open, the door's closed, but something could be inside the locker, which could be dangerous, which would never be known until it was too late. So by knowing contents in the locker, now we can avoid those things or send out a notice to security to come check the locker. What differs our technology from other applications such as this with scales is that we don't need calibration. The scales that sit in parts of lockers get affected by weather. So as the weather fluctuates, the calibration of the scale changes and now you start to get false positives. 
we don't need to do that kind of calibration. And calibration also adds to the operational cost because now you're running around calibrating things. Uh, the other you know, drawback of the scale is it needs to have direct contact with the parcel. So it needs to sit on it. So if the parcel's wedged in or if someone stuck something to the side of the locker, the, the scale will never know. Our technology is not a scale. It is a beam of light that looks for reflection, so it's any type of content. So quickly in a, how it works with postal operators, we'll focus on the bottom two thirds of the screen where we have a passive parcel locker and a passive street letter box. The technology gets inserted inside the, inside the container. It's either gonna be a cellular or a battery powered device depending on how we want to deploy the network. It runs off of a cellular network and shoots it up to the cloud. Now when it's sitting in the cloud, we have all kinds of options with, with the data. So we, we, we can write an API to send it out to a route planning application. We can write an API that goes out to analytics. And so there's a lot of options once it's sitting in the cloud. It could be our cloud, it could be your cloud. We don't really care. Currently it sits with Amazon SMS, which I think we talked about yesterday. And in gang applications, what we do is we start to use short range wireless communications to lower the cost. So if you have a, a, a big uh, bundle of lockers, we're gonna have one map that's gonna go up to the cloud via the modem, and the modem's the most expensive component. And then we're gonna have a bunch of slave devices using a less expensive technology talking to the master and up to the cloud again. So back to the B2Me, the consumer model is pretty simple. Because it runs on the internet, it doesn't matter to us where it's deployed in the world. All we need is a, a 3G or 2G connection or an LTE connection, depending on what part of the world it is. And it always sends it up to the cloud. So no matter where we deploy it, what we're doing is the customer might log into a website, they're gonna sign up, they're gonna receive a device, they're gonna put the batteries and they're just simply gonna insert the device in their box. Then they go to the cloud and decide what is their notification network look like. Is it gonna be just me being notified or is it gonna be me, my wife, and my daughter? And then we set up how do we want our preferences to be. So I would like to receive an email, my daughter would like to receive a text, and my wife would like to use the application. When the mail shows up, we're notified there's something to go collect. It's a whole group of us. One of us collects it, and then we're notified again as a group that it's been collected. So we're not stumbling on each other going back. This has been working out well for uh, applications where there's mobility issues, where people have mobility issues and getting to the box is complicated. We can put in their support community into the notification group, and then that support community can go to the box when required and help out the person with mobility issues. So before we did any kind of investment, obviously, we checked the market. So because we're in Canada, we had the big rollout of community mailboxes. We thought it was an interesting opportunity to look at. So we hired a uh, third party marketing firm and they, uh, we wanted a 95% uh, confidence level. So they did a population, a sample size of a population of 400 Canadian households, which were decision makers and people using uh, PO boxes or community boxes in Canada. And the net result was 43% said, we want the service. And another 10% said, we might want the service. So from our perspective as a business model, it was a decent sized market, especially in Canada, we have five million boxes. So we, we, we proceeded to, to go ahead and, you know, this data's not gonna work for every country, but it would work for similar countries like probably like the US. Implementation on the B2Me model is pretty simple. Two step process, and uh, we can do it in as little as 12 weeks. Uh, step one is we gotta size the device to fit the box. So the technology doesn't change. What's proprietary is the way that we're collecting our reflection of what's inside. Uh, we size that to fit, whether it's a parcel locker or a small PO box or a big PO box or community mailbox, we size it to fit. Uh, we translate the user interface as required. Again, it's all sitting in the cloud, so it doesn't really matter where it is unless there's security issues that need to be addressed by country. It sits in the cloud currently in the United States. And uh, customer logs in, they buy the product, we ship it, they stick it in their box and away we go. We can do that in about 12 weeks. And uh, the capex on this model is either zero or very low, depending on what kind of business model we work out with the operator. So we, we were cognizant that you own the customer and you own the box. So there's obviously a rev share or a royalty, some sort of agreement that needs to happen. So depending on how that looks, sometimes we take on the, the capex, which is okay. Sometimes not, depending on how the model works. So I'll leave you guys with a quick video. It's the next one here. Let's get this. Maybe you can pull it to the next one for me and play the video of how it works. 30 second video on how the thing works. Thank you. You've got. You got back up one. Snaily, a text message when mail has been delivered to your mailbox. 
Bring your mailbox into the digital age. Save gas, the environment, and avoid the hassles of rain, snow, or traffic. No more guesswork because you've got Snaily. A text to your phone when snail mail has arrived. So that it, huh? Good. Good.